Hello, Statlings. Today we're going to discuss some basic ideas about research design. Before we get started with a discussion about experiments and observational studies, I'd like to introduce a couple of ideas to you about study variables and specifically the idea that there is an independent variable and a dependent variable. And we discussed this as um, the independent variable is the one that is the exposure. In a strict experiment, it's sometimes called the manipulation. And the dependent variable is the variable that you are measuring. Uh, <clears throat> it's the outcome of interest. And the participant's performance on the dependent variable is always measured as part of the study. And we'll talk about this again later. But this just gives us a little bit of terminology and framing as we walk through the rest of our discussion. So let's start with controlled experiments. This is a basic sort of research design. And in a controlled experiment, you have a number of participants. And the key aspect of this is that they are assigned by the investigator to either the treatment group or the control group. Now, in a more complex experiment, you might see multiple treatment groups that are compared. But for our purposes today, we'll just think about one treatment group and one control group. The treatment group is the group that um, receives an intervention, whereas the control group doesn't receive the intervention. And a key aspect of a blinded study is that the participants shouldn't know, don't know what group they are in. A study is called double blind if the investigators also don't know what group the participants are in. After being assigned to groups, the participants are, have, um, are exposed to either the exposure or the control group. Whatever the exposure is that they get, the treatment or control, um, they receive it after being assigned to groups because the groups were decided by the investigator. And this is different from an observational study, as we'll see. Another important point here is that the treatment group and the control group should always be as similar as possible on everything except the exposure. And the variables that are we're most concerned about the participants being similar on are potential confounding variables, which we will talk about more in a moment. Uh, these are often things like age, uh, sex, socioeconomic status, but they can be more nuanced as well. In the course of the experiment, after the exposure, the dependent variable is measured, the outcome, and the group outcomes are compared for these two groups. Later on, when we compare groups statistically, we'll take into account things like group size and the amount of variation in each group, as you'll see, that help to control for the various factors um, and differences in individuals and, and groups. Um, so we will be revisiting this setup throughout the other topics that we discuss, especially the idea of group comparisons. And when we do these comparisons, we uh, are comparing their performance on the dependent variable. We look at the effect of the independent variable, the group, on the performance of the dependent variable or the outcome. Another type of this, uh, study that we've discussed is the observational study. Uh, now, the observational study differs a bit from an experimental study in that the investigator does not assign participants to groups. The participants assign themselves to groups, and the investigators just observe what happens. Uh, so this could happen ahead of time. The with investigators, you know, watching a group of people over time, but all, oftentimes observational studies involve uh, retrospective data where participants 
report what happened to them on the variables of interest to the experimenters. And in this sense, the participants have been assigned themselves to the groups because they are reporting what's already happened to them. The experimenters can't assign them to any particular exposure. It already happened. So this gets at an important idea in thinking about in observational studies is the idea of a confounding variable. That's a third variable that comes between the exposure and the outcome. And a confounding variable must be associated with both the exposure and the outcome. And we can visualize this if we think about there being a direct, uh, we can imagine a relationship that's direct between the exposure and the outcome. But then you have to remember, well, other variables could be, um, another variable could be associated with both the exposure and the outcome. And we will see this in one of our, uh, more than one of our review exercises. But some great examples of confounding variables are age, sex, socioeconomic status. Uh, if, for example, we're interested in smoking as an exposure, and health as an outcome, we'd expect that age would be associated with the exposure to smoking and to the outcome health. And so we will discuss some more examples of confounding variables, but it's always important to keep this idea in mind. Um, and good studies put effort into controlling for these confounding variables. So we've discussed some new vocabulary in this video and in the chapter's uh, reading. So let's just go through it real quickly. The method of comparison is the method that statistics uses to decide whether there are differences and to uh, draw conclusions about uh, groups. The treatment group is the group that receives whatever the intervention is, the, and the control group might receive a placebo or they don't receive the intervention. These are two key parts of any experimental design. Random assignment to groups is important because random assignment helps to control for potentially confounding variables and distribute them evenly across our groups. And we will revisit this idea of random assignment and why random sampling and random assignment is important. Um, we'll revisit that again a few more times throughout the term. So uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as random assignment is concerned. We also discussed the idea that a study could be blind or double blind. When a study is blind, the participants don't know what condition of the study they're in. And when a study is double blind, neither the participants nor the investigator know what group the uh, participants are in. Finally, we discussed the important idea of confounding, and confounding is when a third variable uh, is associated with both your exposure and your outcome. And it's important to identify confounding variables or possible confounding variables, and then you can control for them statistically. And this is an idea, again, that we'll revisit more, especially um, in Unit 2. So we're just at the launching point here. Uh, so make sure you come back and watch more of our videos and especially the review exercises on research design. So thanks for watching. And remember, for the most efficient way, do some statistics every day.